Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got 15 new things to know about the new Garmin 4155. Now, I know all the attention on today's announcements are probably on the new LTE connectivity of the 945, their higher and running watch, but here's a dirty secret. This is where all the goods are. Like, yeah, that's cool and all that kind of stuff, but there is so much new stuff packed on this watch, it's insane. They've basically taken the 4200-245 and stuffed into this watch. That's like the simplest explanation of it. So I'm gonna run through these 15 new things uh, and then uh, you'll know everything you to know about it. Uh, the first thing to know, which is not part of the 15 things, is the price. It stays at 199 US uh, dollars. And in this case, there's only one model now. So in the past, there was a 445 and a 45S, two slightly different sizes. They've consolidated that back to just the 455 and it uses the same screen size as the past larger unit. Uh, and it has the same exterior bezel of 42 millimeters like the past uh, 445. So, okay, the very first one on the list is addition of Pace Pro. This is something we saw on Garmin's higher-end watches a couple years ago. Uh, and what it allows you to do is to get a customized kind of race plan for a given course, or no course at all if you want to, uh, that accounts for essentially the terrain. So the idea being that you're going to run certain splits faster or slower if you're going uphill or downhill uh, to meet a target goal pace or uh, target goal time. Uh, so you do all this on Garmin Connect to Mobile, uh, and then you shoot that to the watch itself, and then you can execute that on the watch as you're out and about doing this particular race or on a training day. The next one is the addition of daily suggested workouts. Again, another thing that started on Gar Garmin's higher end watches just a year or so ago. Uh, and in this case, it's just for running. Uh, and what essentially it will do is it looks at your existing running profile over the last couple of days with the workouts, uh, longer than that in some cases. Uh, and then it looks at your recovery and it suggests a workout for today. Uh, so it's done a pretty good job of suggesting what it should suggest uh, based on what I would think a coach would normally give. So you access this every time you hit the run menu. Uh, so you hit run, uh, and then in a second it will show this here because I'm indoors, it won't show this quite yet. So I'll just go to training, workouts, today's suggestion, and right now it's showing doing a base workout at 8.15 a mile uh, for 48 minutes. And it tells me what this particular workout is for. Uh, and you can see there's the steps there. In some cases, it'll give you more complex workouts, intervals and things like that. Uh, but in this case, it's just kind of a straightforward run uh, to help my base. Now, just a quick note, if you find this video interesting or useful or informative or something like that, simply whack that like button at the bottom. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. So the next feature is probably my favorite feature on this watch, which is track mode. Uh, I love going to the track and I love getting perfect GPS tracks for well, Strava after the fact. So you go into sport modes here and you go down to track run. You can move it to the top by adding it to a favorites. Uh, and then from there, you can choose which lane you're in. So left hand button right there, track run settings, lane number, uh, and you can see the lanes there. Uh, and then what happens is when you go to the track for the very first time, when you go to a given track for that very first time, it'll learn the track. In general, you're talking two to three laps before it learns it. So simply save off that particular workout and then go ahead and start your legit track workout again for the first time you go to a given track. You don't have to do that. You can just do your track work and it learns it and you'll have some imperfections on that uh, first couple laps and then it like snaps perfectly to the exact lane of the track. Something that Garmin rolled out about a year ago after Koros did it first and it's really cool. I used it today on my workout and it was pretty much flawless. Uh, besides the pretty track, the main benefit to this is that it knows your exact position around that track and thus it can give you exact pacing the entire way around versus more variable pacing. So my wife was using an older uh, Phoenix 5S uh, and her pacing was like blub, 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 um, versus mine was perfectly consistent the entire way because it knew exactly where I was on that track. It also will go ahead and snap the distances uh, a little bit closer to the 100. So uh, if you're coming up on 800 meters for a distance, you hit lap, it snaps it to 800 meters. Uh, not quite as good of snapping as the Wahoo Rival series, but pretty darn close. Now, once you've got a couple of runs under your belt, you will start to see accurate data or some accurate data at least in the finish time estimator, which is the next feature. So if I go down into the widgets right there, uh, you'll see it says my VO2 max, it says 60 right now. Uh, and it has my VO2 max there. I go back down again and see his race predictor. This race predictor predicts your current finishing time is based on your VO2 max, but also based on what you've been doing lately. So I have not been doing a ton of super long runs, like 20 miles or anything like that. So you'll see my 5K time isn't too bad. Uh, but my marathon time is a bit slower relative to my 5K time. And I say relative because that's important. So it's looking at this and saying, you know what? You don't really have the long base mileage to be able to get a fast enough marathon time to match that potential 5K time. Uh, again, this is not a perfect thing. This is giving you like 
the potential, the capacity to do this uh, based on your current VO2 max, which it estimates, uh, and then based on your recent run history. Now, if you keep going down in this menu here, you will see recovery hours, which is also new on the 455, and the first time we've seen it on this uh, kind of watch series. And this uses the data from your workouts to go ahead and figure out your recovery time until your next hard workout. And that's something that's in like the minor text of Garmin's online site here and there, but isn't on this watch itself or any other watches, and it's often really confusing to people. But this is until your next hard workout. So 15 hours, which puts me basically you know, tomorrow morning or so, which is fine. Uh, and it just tells me to train as usual. Uh, if I had a much longer duration there, it would tell me some additional guidance or more detailed guidance there as well. Now, the next feature is the addition of the finish time estimator. So the way that works, we'll go back to the run menu, like pretending a new run, uh, go into run, and then we'll go into training on the left-hand side right there training all the way down to estimate finish time. And we just choose the distance that we want. So we choose a 10K, half marathon, marathon, or we can do a custom. Uh, we just choose the 10K here, and then we just simply start running. And it's gonna tell you how much suffering time you have left until you reach the end of your run based on your current pacing. Super simple, super straightforward, uh, and it shows you the amount of distance left as well until the end of the run. Now, switching topics away a little bit from pure running stuff is the addition of Connect IQ. In the past, you had Connect IQ watch faces, which means like you could download customizable watch faces from Garmin Connect IQ, which is their app store. Uh, but in this case, they add on data fields, widgets, and apps. Uh, and the reason that matters is there are a ton of data fields out there. So data field, for example, that allows you to connect a power meter to this watch if you want to. There's a data field that allows you to count how many beers you've earned uh, for a given run. And there, I mean, there's literally thousands and thousands of fields out there, basically a ton of different apps from a ton of different developers that you can go ahead and put on the watch. Uh, and in particular for runners, one that probably matters the most is the ability to add the stride data field. Uh, so you can go ahead into here, add the stride data field now. Uh, it should show up probably the next couple of days, uh, but I tested it on a run today, for example, my track run, and the data came through just fine. Uh, so that allows you to get running power onto this watch. Now, continue on a little bit of the geekier trend here is the addition of the virtual run profile. So you see that right there virtual run. Uh, what this is used for is primarily Zwift uh, running, treadmill running, uh, and it basically will broadcast your pace, your cadence, uh, as well as your heart rate over Bluetooth Smart and M+, but over Bluetooth Smart, uh, so that you can pick it up in other apps. So for example, I can go into Zwift running, pair up my watch here, just wear it on my wrist like normal, uh, and then it'll broadcast that pace information to Zwift. Uh, now the accuracy of that information is going to vary a little bit, primarily we're talking the pace side of it. Uh, the more data that you have for this watch outside, it'll pull that data and use it for in doors run. So if you were to put this watch straight in your wrist and go straight in the treadmill, the accuracy would be hot garbage. But if you go outside and run a very varied workout, uh, then that fills up these little buckets of different pace categories, and then it completes a more accurate profile of uh, your pacing from an accelerometer standpoint. In addition to the virtual run profile, there's also a few more uh, new profiles, sport profiles here. Uh, you'll see if you go down, there is the, uh, there we go, pool swim. Uh, so in the past, you could not have a pool swim mode. It was always waterproof. This is waterproof too, of course, but this will actually count laps in the pool. There is no open water swim though. That is Garmin's higher end watches to get that. Uh, you also see down here the uh, hit workouts there as well. Uh, in total, I believe there's 18 different sport profiles uh, that are here. So again, not quite the same like breadth that you'd see on their higher end watches, but the vast majority of profiles that most people are gonna use are now on the 455. The next one is the addition of women's health tracking into the watch widget itself. While in the past you could do the menstrual cycle or pregnancy tracking uh, in the Garmin Connect app, it wasn't on the 445 series to be able to do it from the watch itself. So now you can track those symptoms directly in the watch in one of the widgets there. Now in my case, my account is set as male, um, so I can't actually access the settings there. Uh, but if you toggle your account to female, then you can go ahead and access those settings from the widgets role menu. You'll just need to add that widget role to uh, your lineup there, uh, super quick and easy, it takes a couple seconds and then you're good to go. Speaking of widgets, one of the things you may have noticed when I was scrolling through here is that the widgets are all smaller now. So these are widget glances, and this is something that uh, we've seen in the past on Garmin's Phoenix 6 series watches and it's trickled down to almost every other watch except the 445 series. Uh, so now we have it in the 55 series. It just makes the data easier to see and access. So as opposed to one big uh, widget per data field, the data type, uh, you see all these listed here and I can just scroll through them. And then once I find what I want more information about, I just simply tap into it and I can see the steps over the course of the day, for example. Uh, and this is using the new user interface uh, kind of UI styling that we've seen on the venue two. Got pulled in here as well. Uh, and again, you can still get the full details of those by clicking into them. 
uh, but otherwise it's just a little bit smaller until you open them up. And since we're in the widgets area, if we go back, we've got a new widget, which was something that was not previously there, uh, which is respiration rate. So this will track respiration rate 24 hours a day. Uh, it won't do it for workouts, uh, but the rest of the day, we'll go ahead and track that. Uh, and you can see, uh, once I put this on, it'll basically track that there and shows my seven day awake average as well. There's plenty of things you can research out there on using respiration rate or breathing rate uh, to predict, you know, kind of the onset of illness, uh, especially over the last year or so. Uh, and it's something that has previously been on most of Garmin's higher end watches. So it's nice to see that a more affordable option here on the 55. Next, just a couple things I wanted to briefly mention that are uh, worthwhile uh, in like sport modes and stuff that are different here. So if I go into run, uh, there is addition of a bunch of new stuff. Uh, so I've got a run settings and we go down into laps. There's now a uh, lap alert banner that you can customize. You can change the data fields on that. So the idea being every time you hit the lap button, uh, you can see like the last split if you want to for that particular interval or whatever the case may be, you can customize that, which is cool. Uh, if we go back here, auto pause now uh, has a custom uh, auto pause threshold. In the past, it was just on or off. So this way you can customize that threshold to make uh, more sense for you. And then if we go back to data fields, you now get up to four data fields uh, per page. So if I go scroll down here, there's some custom pages I have, and you can see those right there, four different fields if you want to. Uh, that's my stride field right there. So the connect IQ one, again, showing in that. And you can customize uh, basically all these fields, but you get two additional fully custom fields. Uh, so this is like a stock field there, a stock field, then a heart rate field, a time field, and then customer one and customer two. Uh, and I just tap into these and I can change the data fields uh, within that. So the top one, I can choose uh, many different data fields here. I only all these in my in-depth review if you want as well uh, to kind of dig into that in more detail. And finally, the last two things, uh, number one is battery life, uh, like section number like 12, I guess, but uh, they've increased the battery life from one week of standby to two weeks of standby. So actually a pretty dramatic improvement there. Uh, thus far, I'd say that seemed to be trending about correctly. Uh, I tend to focus more on the GPS battery life. And for that, they've increased it from 13 hours to 20 hours. That also seems to be trending in the right direction here based on my testing and the files and data, stuff like that. Uh, and the last item on the list is accuracy. In this case, it is using the existing Garmin Elevate V3 optical heart rate sensor versus something like the 945 LTE that just came out today is using the V4 sensor. Practically speaking, I haven't seen that make much of a difference. Uh, they're pretty darn similar in my testing, uh, pretty darn accurate as well, as well as for GPS accuracy. I dive into all the accuracy stuff in my full written review. You can see that in the description down there. Uh, so if you want to go into tons of charts and data and comparisons, that's that's all there for you. It's, it's all there for the taking. So with that, hopefully you found this interesting, useful. Also, there's the full user interface video up in the corner there that goes through even more details on this stuff. I just walked through the entire watch and how it works and all that kind of stuff. It's all, all in there. Otherwise, if you found this video interesting or useful, whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.